So we will be recording this meeting, even though it won't be live to, right now. We'll get it mounted later or get it up later. Let me just check and make sure that I've got everybody here who I thought we were going to have. Waiting on Chris. Maybe Kathy's not coming. Uh, Dave or Linda, do you have word? Yes. Would you mind being our note taker and putting it up on the screen? Uh, putting it up on the screen. Yeah. I don't know how to do that. Um, at the bottom of the screen, there's a green box that says share screen. Yeah. If you, if you open up a word document and then click on that. Okay. It will bring up a, whatever screens you have open on your computer. If you just select the Word document. Okay. Uh, Perfect. Okay. I might suggest down at the bottom of your Word page, you'll see the where you can uh, make it bigger. At the very bottom in the corner, there's a slide bar. Well, you can X out of the uh, navigation on the left hand side to bring it over. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. yeah, there you go. I got a big screen. So I, I, I mean, I can see it. I don't know. Can you guys see it? Yeah, if you That's just make perfect. it bigger, everybody should be able to That's see it. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Let me just check to see if Chris is out there. I don't see Chris, but I think we ought to go ahead and um, hopefully he'll get over. And if not, then we'll just go with what we have as our group. So tonight, um, as Anita was directing, we're looking at the environmental initiatives that we want to be supporting in the township. And our focus is on these three outcomes. And again, all of our goals should build to achieve these outcomes, hopefully within the five years. And so um, we'll start with the wetlands, uh, streams, uh, trees, and vegetation are reestablished, protected, and preserved. Well, that's where we'll start this evening. We're going to spend roughly about 20 minutes on each one. Uh, we've allowed about an hour and 10 minutes, an hour and, uh, or 15 minutes at the most uh, for this breakout session. And so um, kind of as we did last time, we're just going to kind of open it up and allow people to kind of start sharing thoughts and what are some of the way things that they think we ought to be working on uh, to achieve that. And then we can talk about what steps it takes to get there. ideas. Okay. Um, I'm still looking at a comprehensive plan and a lot of these we should just revisit and implement. So I mean one of them is um, create a um, protected zone which I think we are actually in the midst of doing which would be a conservation um, what is it called? L Linda, I don't know if it's me, but uh, uh, your volume's really low. Uh, is everybody else hearing that? Or yeah, it, it's it's. Is she's soft spoken. <laughs> I'm so Can you hear me now? A little better. Yep. A little better. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I think in our current zoning rewrite, we're already considering a environmental protection spot overlay and correct me if I'm wrong Steve but I think that could help with identifying and in the zoning map those protected areas that we want to continue to preserve and protect and that would be streams the wetlands um, those vegetation areas so 
do you remember what that zoning overlay is called, Steve? Because I think that would meet the SMART goal. Yeah, I think it's, I think, it, I, I'm not exactly sure, but I think it was environmental protection overlay uh, or uh, uh, there was actually another term for the resources. Uh, Andy's, Andy's on. Andy, do you remember what we called that? You're on mute, Andy. Andy, you're on mute. I don't see him. I see him, but he's on mute. Oh. But there you am go. Am I okay now? Yeah, you're yeah. okay now. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I think what we talked about were a, a set of maps, different maps that identified the floodplains uh, in accordance with the most current FEMA map. Um, another map to identify, you know, protected wetlands and uh, also our steep slope districts. Um, yeah. You know, different mapping to address those different features. Uh, and also moving at all of the environmentally sensitive ordinances in the zoning. Okay. So we could apply it across the board without just being specific to land development. Yes. Okay. Did you have something I, else? I have a lot more, but I don't want to dominate, so. <laughs> Anybody else have a suggestion before Linda goes again? I, I th do think it's important to know that, you know, most of these areas are fairly well defined now. Um, we do have repairing buffer zones that deal with protections and isolation distances from our wetlands. Um, obviously, if anything is located within a FEMA floodplain, it has to undergo certain criteria and certain um, approvals before uh, anything could be built in, in, a, in an identified floodplain. And then, of course, we have even more strict restrictions on impacts to the steep slopes. Yeah. So, Andy, I got a question for you. You're saying that, um, I mean, the expected outcome, are, are you saying that pretty much we have measures in place um, to already achieve that outcome? I mean, yeah. or for the most part? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I think we would say they're there. I would think we would say one of the challenges we have, Ed, is that because of the way they're written, they don't necessarily get applied outside of land development. Correct. And so it's moving them to be under zoning so that they get applied equally across the township. Yeah. And, um, and it, it, it wouldn't be just limited to land development. Right. Okay. So, so that, so in, uh, simply, you know, the initiative would be to, to, to move, uh, well, as Andy already said, move the ordinances into, into zoning. Yeah. Um, that, that I mean, we have adequate uh, measures in place with within our current ordinances, and uh, um, they 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 should be um, you know um, replicated in in zoning um, so that decisions are made you know based on um, these initiatives to achieve the outcomes, right? Yeah, I think that I do think that we'll have to be a little bit broader than what the what they say in land development in regards to the. Um, some of what is in land development really only talks about at, at that time and is limited to, um, you know, commercial or slash residential that's being built. And we need, we need to say that the riparian buffers and the, and the steep slope disturbance really applies all the time. Correct. Right. Essentially, what I think what we're trying to accomplish is to make sure that any property 
protects these, these environmentally sensitive areas at all times. So yeah. if you're a homeowner and you happen to have wetlands on your property, you, you can't or you won't be permitted to do it by right. I mean, there's, there would be a process in which you would have to go through a zoning process that a resident would have to go through and they would have to prove through plan, some level of planning that they would, were not going to harm that wetland or that floodplain during whatever improvement they want to make to their property. So if, if someone wanted to build an addition on their property and they were in close proximity to a wetland, they would have to go through a procedure to make sure that that wetland was protected. And normally residential construction of that nature does, isn't governed by land development. That, that's yeah. generally strictly a building or zoning permit. Part of that is reestablishment. So how would zone, what would zoning have to do with reestablishment? That it wouldn't. No, the established, I mean, I think that there's specific definitions that those environmental areas have to meet in order to qualify as such. So a 100 year floodplain is identified by a FEMA map. So we would incorporate that FEMA mapping into our zoning as a, as a, as a map figure in the, in the zoning code. And we'd be able to use it as a tool to kind of more closely pinpoint a property that may be in question. So if, if, you're, if you were a homeowner and wanted to develop your property, and again, had a floodplain on your property, we would be able to quickly identify it as a property impacted by the flood zone. But there's different level, levels of, of flood zone as well. So what's protected, and it's protected by a federal standard in which we've adopted is the 100 year floodplain. It, it, it does, it, we, we have another definition of 500 year flood, but that is a undefined, area that's not been studied. So what our ordinances, what the federal guidelines give us to, to follow is that we have to enforce certain procedures on the, any areas impacted by the 100 year flood. Yeah. So with that in mind, and I think what John was getting at, and you know, so we have these ideas about moving this other under zoning but if, if we're going, and I don't want to speak for John, but if we were, if we're going to look at reestablishing um, some that have been developed over the time, uh, you know, we would have to figure out how to go back and look at that. Is, am I kind of speaking directly what you were talking about, John? Absolutely. Thank you. So, you know, with that thought is, are we open to, you know, maybe creating a, uh, or having the environmental advisory committee or another similar type of committee that would be focused on looking at what was, what were some of the places that were at some one point, either uh, wetlands, or even streams that need to be protected, the riparian buffers, are we, you know, do we want somebody to start looking at where we've encroached upon that and we could start pulling back? I mean, obviously, uh, you know, in some places we won't be able to because we've, uh, we've allowed growth up to a certain point, but do we, do we look at, um, you know, looking at that encroachment and can we start slowly pulling back some of that around the around the township i think that would be a good use of the eac as a starting point for looking at this other thoughts from others i think it's a good idea yep I'm not familiar with the EAC, the, I guess that's the Environmental Advisory Committee and what their, their reach is. Well, they, they've tackled a variety of issues. This would be kind of right in their area. That's the reason why I mentioned them as a possibility. Gotcha.
any other thoughts related to, um, you know, and one of the things we've talked about is, you know, the importance of replanting trees. Um, and we've, the board has, what, within the last month, uh, maybe a little over a month ago, passed the tree ordinance um, that is intended to help start protecting uh, some of the, some of the trees that have been taken down, making sure that, again, that was in land development before, and now we've set it out a little bit more open so that when trees are taken down, there's a little bit more of expectation of replacing. Could I read you, if you can hear me, two ideas from the comments, the public comment section that I think are actually really great ideas? Sure. Okay, so one is continue to pursue opportunities to implement and showcase green stormwater improvements, best management practices with municipal facilities, uh, such as rain gardens, rain barrels, native plant meadows. And I know the EAC is going to install two rain gardens. Uh, Haverford has a program where they will partner, I think with the township and a nonprofit, I don't exactly know how it works to educate the public on rain gardens and then install rain gardens if the residents are willing to provide stormwater management on their property. So I think that is a model we could replicate for Newtown very easily because it's already been done. So green stormwater management that would also apply to enhancing our existing stormwater basins instead of just riprap or whatever it's called, which are those rocks you plant around it with native so that it actually does reduce a lot of the water runoff and and collects more of the water before it actually goes into the storm drain so that's what green blue green storm water management is and so another comment made suggestion from public was all storm water basins should be naturalized to improve stormwater management functions, which I think is another good idea that we could implement within the next five years. And I agree with you on that. In it, it, but I would like to, Dave, if you would take item D, and D, D yes, and to do a couple entries and actually put in uh if you would put in number two open space and then number three storm water we'll put item d underneath the storm water um uh, uh you okay outcome D does that make sense linda Sort of like that, or well, just and then just do a hard return there, right? And put in uh, for that, put in open space so that we know what we're doing, and then on number three, put in stormwater management, and then make the suggestion be your A. Oh, gotcha. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I jumped ahead. I think if you just type in, if you just in front of suggestion, I'm sorry, uh, that whole thing would go. Oh, uh, as a. As a, but three would be stormwater management just in general. Okay. Got it. So sorry, and then I'll, I'll stop talking. So to number one, 
because I jumped ahead to number three. For trees, uh, what about establishing a shade tree commission, which would, and then and maybe enact an ordinance, give it authority to review any development projects to ensure protection of trees. I mean, we have a couple of examples right now where there's maybe not protection of the trees and it was clear cut clear cut. So a shade tree commission is something I think that could very easily be enacted. Yeah, and I, I was actually mentioned that they, that the board just two weeks ago passed a tree ordinance that actually addresses quite a bit of that. So maybe should we put down enforce the, the uh, tree ordinance? As, just so we... Yeah, I would say enforce, you know, enact all the, enact all of the pieces of the, of it as well as enforce it. Of the, yeah, of the tree ordinance. Enact and enforce. It's called and, the tree ordinance, isn't it? And I and I think one of the things on the stormwater management is we have um, a few engineering studies going on now for some problem areas, and maybe we have to prioritize some other ones that are on this list in the future, and then come up with a game plan once we get these studies back. If we have additional studies to do, or if we can start, you know, maybe knocking off some of this these drain problems a little bit by a little bit each year. I think that's a good point, Mike. Um, so it's under just a little bit more under storm water. Yeah. Put that uh, uh, shade tree ordinance up under under one. Yeah. Right, Steve. Yes, please. Yeah. So that goes number D. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Well, and and. And there actually are shade tree commissions in yeah. lots of other municipalities. So a, co a committee would be able to oversee whether the tree ordinance is being upheld. Yeah, it's actually a part of our tree ordinance requires that there be a committee set up. Oh, good, good. So I think what Ed, uh, I mean, what Mike was saying related to the stormwater is that we would, um, and correct me if I'm wrong. Well, Mike, we're doing some engineering, study, engineering studies of some problem areas. Yeah. And then um, probably prioritize um, uh, corrective measures. Um, for certain areas. Yeah. I mean, I, it's something that we don't have an option to do, but I would put on there under this, since we're jumped down to stormwater, we, under the uh, area would be uh, implementing the MS4 plan. Okay. I mean, we don't have much of an option. I mean, we're no. required to do it, but I think that it is, it should be part of our goal of stormwater. One of the things that was brought up, and I, and I think it's a really creative idea, is that we tie, that we look at taking a neighborhood, and it's a little different approach, um, but if let's say we know we have an area, and I, I'm, I'm picking on an area right now, and I'm going to pick on uh, the uh, heights, because I know we have some water problems there, but it, that we consider doing a more holistic type of approach. And so that we would look at, in that one location, not only will we look at how we're handling storm water through the drainage and whether we're looking at putting in some type of system of drainage, but we would also function on, um, uh, we would also focus, not function, but focus on uh, rain gardens. We would focus on uh, tree plantings. We would, you know, focus on the things that help 
uh, you know, focus on this concept that we, you know, the board passed a resolution probably, I don't know, probably three months, four months ago now, uh, three months, uh, re relating to native plants. And the, the, one of the reasons for that is a lot of the native plants help to address the water uh, issues and the stormwater issues that we have. And so um, I would see that as a possibility related to how we do some, like really looking at it as a holistic kind of concept versus just going in and saying, we got to replace the storm pipe but we're going to replace the storm pipe and we're going to look at doing street trees and we're going to look at taking a neighborhood and really doing a complete project that addresses it more holistically um encouraging people with rain gardens street trees you know whatever else rain barrels you know all of those things um and you know not to preclude any one neighborhood, but like if you tackle a neighborhood at a time, you might be able to really uh, make a real impact on the stormwater problem versus picking just like we've had to do just one location and fix it that we fix them, fix the problem by putting a bandaid on it, make it go away for a while. But then it, when we have these big storms, it's back again. Shouldn't A so, under number yeah, that, two go on under number three? Yeah, that should be yeah. number A under two should go to uh, D under as number as D under three, right? Yeah. yeah. Dave, you've got the hardest job. I, this is not fun. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, it's why. We, hey, we're just helping. I, I, I would, I wouldn't even uh, do it that well, David. <laughs> Doing we, we, matter of fact, with the meeting would have been stopped about six times if I was doing it. It's hard to listen and type. It I is. It's very hard. <laughs> You're doing good. I appreciate it. So we tackle tackle uh, open space here, or? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think. I mean, we're doing fine on time, but let's go ahead and um, let's let's. If we have some ideas specifically. I think the way we're kind of jumping around, we just need to announce what it is that we're talking about so that Dave knows where we're typing. And right. so, <laughs> we've so we have really hard on them. So Steve, question. I, I, I believe we have, you know, we have identified uh, throughout the township, the, the current, you know, open space. Uh, Potential that, that, open space. Yeah. Yeah. So that, cause I, okay. So, so it is, identified right yeah i think that what we've done is we when we went and did the comp plan we did an overlay of areas that at that time were not developed and we said that they are potential open space areas and i think that what we haven't done and that i think would be next steps is to prioritize what it, what open space areas we really want to make sure stay open space and also understand that some of them I mean Claude's Claude's been very clear he's not going to sell us or allow us to demand that his areas stay open space but right. with some of the zoning rewrite that we're doing we're setting it up so that open space becomes the priority and that it's almost like if you want to do a normal development, you've got to ask for permission. And it, you know, it's almost harder to do a normal development than do a cluster. And so we're trying to make that happen. Um, but uh, I think that one of the things, I mean, I think if we're going to be serious about open space, there's two things that I think, it, as I see it, that need to happen. One is to prioritize the areas where we want open space. And then two would be to prioritize setting aside funding to not only acquire, but also to maintain. Yeah, but, uh, but also to decide which open space is, is feasible because, you know, like you said, depending on the, you know, you know, the ownership, I mean, you know, anything that Claude has, I mean, it's not even, you know, feasible to, to, to pursue, right? Um, so, okay. you know, identifying the open space, uh, what's feasible and then prioritizing and then looking at funding, right? Yeah. Wouldn't that be the order? I, I think so. Well, I would think this, um, 
we might argue, uh, I, saw, I really cannot do two things at once, I'm sorry. I was getting a question from the other group. Um, the, the, I, I, I might argue that we should at least have funding kind of going simultaneously while we're doing this, at least starting to put funds aside in that if we get an opportunity to acquire a piece of open space, we would then have resources to do so. That, that would be my only, you know, I don't know that I would wait all the funding until the end, but I hear what you're saying. Typically, yes, it's getting funding at the end. Okay. Yeah, I think it's important to, to be clear that the zoning rewrite is trying to promote open space. And Steve kind of touched on this. We're trying to promote open space as much of it as we possibly can, but that goes hand in hand with development. So as Steve suggested, you know, we looked at Claude's property and, and said that we would allow cluster by right, cluster development by right, which would give us 50% of that land as open space right off the top. Um, but then a, a normal R1 development or R4 development would have to, would require conditional use approval. So we're trying to nudge people in the right direction so we get open space that goes hand in hand with development. Right. Rather than just straight, a straight up purchase. Yeah. So, so mention the zoning ordinance should be in number one, right? I mean, in, num in the open space number two. Right. Uh, so that would be requiring, uh, or is it rezoning, or is it just changing? I think B should be um, zoning. Zoning prioritizes open space by requiring normal. I think it has something to do with B, the zoning. Yeah. I think it's the zoning. I think it's we give preference to uh, protection of open space. We give more freedom to the developer who protects open space. Yeah. Is that a fair way to say that, Andy? Is, I uh, think so. Yeah. I, I just wanted to kind of make it clear that it, you know they went they were kind of went hand in hand yes there was a level of development but it promoted this the um you know pr preservation of open space yes linda oh in the can you hear me yeah um i think uh, going along with open space identification of defined open space areas i think to add to that, um, adopt an official map, which would, it was mentioned in our comprehensive plan as a suggestion. And what that does is it grants the township the first right of refusal when they have, op if they've identified that land as open space that we want to preserve, if the township has the funds, they would be able to purchase that. Actually, Is that correct? Yeah, and it actually gives us a period of time to do it in. Mm -hmm. I still think 2B should say, maybe through the zoning, still should say zoning ordinance somewhere in there. So we don't forget it through the okay. zoning. Just so we don't forget where the stuff is coming from, that's all. Does that require zoning ordinance changes? Is that what we're noting? Well, we're in the midst of doing that right now, Dave. Okay. We're doing a full zoning rewrite and we're taking all of this into account. But anything that comes out of here, we would take back to the zoning rewrite to make sure it's included. The good news is we're right in the middle of the process. Any other uh, thoughts related to 
any one of these three, we have about, well, we've probably got about at least uh, 20 more minutes if, if we do. Uh, would there be, would this be one too many committees for the township? I mean, would it be wise to have an open space committee? Or would that be another something that would fall under the EAC and give the EAC more authority? I think once you have the open spaces defined and you have the ordinance written, then it's just a matter of, I mean, the process is already there. Right. Someone's already identified and set up a way to enforce it. Like looking for, you know, the, the trees and wetlands and whatever. That's an ongoing process. But I think once you've identified the open spaces, it's done. Yeah. And once you have the ordinance, it's done. Yeah, I think there's a couple pieces. One, I think you have, I think you have the project to determine what should be open space. You have the project of acquiring what we can acquire. And then we have the project of maintaining it once we acquire it. Or, you know, we're talking about this from the township controlling all the open space. You know, a lot of communities, they have encouraged, you know, if you look at like a Willis town or something like that, they've actually encouraged individual landowners to, to, uh, uh, protect some of their land and uh, put uh, protection easements on it. And, you know, for example, uh, you know, when we were going through the process with Mr. Nolan regarding the two 40 acre tracks on either side of the track that he owns, uh, he came into an issue because he had protected uh, his piece of property. And by protecting his piece of property, uh, the lands trust would not allow him to put a uh, sewer line across his property between the two pieces. So, um, you know, some have already done that. And we actually have a few pieces in the township where others have done the same. Uh, and they protected, you know, 20 or 30 acres. Uh, that, I mean, no, it's not used for public use, but it is, it is public or it's protected and has public benefit. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's not a lot of that left out there to be done, but, you know, it is possible that we could look at, you know, is that something that we could at least make some kind of encouragement to? Do I need a, a separate line for that? Uh, I think it's a different kind of uh, conservation and it's, it's not public lands but it would be private open space, encouraging conservation of private open space. And you could just leave it at that. Those are, those are conservation easements. Yes. Anyone else have any ideas for either of or any of these items? I mean, looks like a pretty, pretty good list. Yeah, yeah. you guys have done great. I mean, I mean, I think, I mean, I think the township has has prioritized these things over the years, anyway. So. Um, yeah, I think there's other townships that are far behind us when it comes to, you know, stormwater management and um, protection of the streams, wetlands, and so forth. I mean, we 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 have at least, uh, um, you know, focused on those as as we've uh, uh, 
you know, through, you know, the land, the land development process, um, you know, looking at our uh, ordinances and so forth. Yeah. So we're not starting from ground zero. So it looks like, what do you think, Mike? You think this is pretty, uh, I think it's pretty extensive myself. Yeah. I can't think of anything else we want to add. Is it um is it well known what the MS4 plan is? I'm probably the only one that doesn't know what that means. Do, do I need to add anything to that? Um, so that, uh, that's a that's a uh, state mandated uh, <laughs> yeah work on um, improving everybody's drainage statewide, and you have uh, certain requirements based upon um, what type of systems you have in place. You have stream restoration. So there's a bunch of different things. Okay. Involved. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty complex. Really. I, I don't know all the details. I'm just giving you a brief overview of the way I understand what we're going to be doing. I'll leave it at implementing the MS4 plan. Then. Yeah. yeah, yeah I would, you know, everybody I would will, <laughs> everybody <laughs> who's involved with what we're doing pretty much will know what it is. And yeah, we, yeah. we can give some definition and I'll put in there where they could go get more information about it uh, when we put it in the uh, packet. Okay. Linda, I know you looked at the uh, uh, comprehensive plan. Again, is there anything that we missed coming out of the comprehensive plan that you can think of? Uh, yeah. Okay. So there was uh, the idea of exploring transfer of, of developmental rights, which oh would be a means of preserving open space. And I think that is when you offer the developer sort of a, a, a premium for swapping open space that the township wants to preserve and you offer them so an example that they might find some value. Yeah. So an example, yep, sorry. if I can, an example would be like, let's say we really wanted to preserve a piece of open space that Claude had, if he would willing, we might say that, you know, typically we allow a density of five houses per acre in this area, but we're going to allow you to put 10 houses per acre on this piece of land that you own so that we keep and I'll just use an example of like the Cherry Blossom Lane area undeveloped. So, you know, where he wants to put Cherry Blossom Lane, we would say we don't want any development there. But if you, if you, in your area over here, uh, where right now you're allowed to do five houses per acre, we're going to allow you to do 10 to get the benefit uh, of doing that. And so what you've done then is you basically have preserved that. So that is the concept of what it's it's a land development swap basically we kind of addressed that somewhat in, in in 2b right you know given more i would say given more flexibility to developers that protect open space right this is probably a little bit bigger than that this this is saying that we actually and and the challenge we have is there's probably at this point one developer left who really uh, who, who has that opportunity just because of, there's not that much space left. Um, so, so, so why don't you, uh, you're saying it's bigger than that and maybe Linda can expand on what she was saying. Maybe I didn't, uh, grasp. So, no, I think, I think it's exactly how Steve described it, but I do think it's something it's an, added, it's an added incentive, aside from some of the changes we made to zoning, which would be, I, it would be called transfer of developmental rights. Yeah. 
and it's just another incentive to add on aside from you know encouraging cluster development encouraging you know making some of the zoning changes we're already wanting to make which will maybe fast track some projects which would then be an incentive for a developer when you offer a transfer of developmental rights to a builder it's another incentive for them to say okay i'll not develop this land i'll take your your option and develop somewhere else so that then the township preserves okay so maybe that's another another item under that maybe that's e right so transfer yeah. development rights uh i would say it's another item rights to environmentally friendly engine uh developers i guess I mean, and it could even be something different in that if the township owned a piece of property that we would consider being developed, we could actually trade kind of thing. I mean, it's, it's that kind of thing that could happen as well. So I don't know if that's uh, the right wording, Steve. Uh, I, it, it'll be enough for us to talk about in the other group yeah. when we go back. Um, the the piece that I, uh, I just really want to make sure before we wrap up and go back to the other group, I've checked with them. They've given the five minute, 10 minute warning um, for us to come back. Is there any other thoughts that you have before we wrap up? Anybody? We miss anything that somebody wants to share on? Do you, do you want me to add township trades under that age is so it's there or um i mean i i don't we don't really have anything that we would be trading at this that i can think of at this point but that it could be that okay um so here's here's the the next uh thing that i'd like is is there someone who would like to use Dave's notes and report out of the group what we talked about tonight. Would somebody volunteer to do that? Everybody raised their hands. <laughs> <laughs> I'd offer except for I'm going to be the one leading the other session so. Nobody will hear me, so I'm not raising my hand. <laughs> <laughs> what do we need to do? I mean, I'm happy to do it, but I miss just the to, other. Just to report out what we what we talked about, so that we're because the other group hasn't heard what we shared, and so this is to allow them to hear what we talked about. Um, will they Will they see the notes? Yeah, they'll see the notes. You'll just throw them up on the screen and talk through them. Okay. All I right. mean, I was busy typing, so I probably would lack additional cover, uh, color, but I can certainly attempt, and if anyone else wants to throw color in as we go through it. Okay. Perfect. Do you want to just take a minute and look at it? And if you have any questions, you can ask our group. But we have about three minutes before that other group's ready for us to start coming back. I mean, I think I'm, I'm okay with it as it is. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and exit. Now, when we leave out of here, it's very important that you close down this session that you if you don't close down the session when you come back it's going to want you to log back into this session and you might find yourself back in here all by yourself and so um, i encourage you to go ahead and shut down your set shut down this session and then come back into the other session uh, i know it'll take us a couple minutes to do that so we're going to go ahead uh, the other group may be finishing up we'll just get in and sit there quietly while they do and then uh, we'll go from there. All right. Thank All right. you. I appreciate this group. And uh, we'll see you on the other group meeting here in just a couple minutes. All right. All right.